Hey guys, T7 here, cutting another video today. So, I was just browsing through the ARG articles and I noticed that um, Patrick Coburn um, uploaded some more crap for us to read. Um, of course, some people bend over for Hoban every day of the week and some people say that he is a huge joke and that's, uh, that's understandable. But if you read his articles, some of the stuff that he comes out with is incredibly arrogant and now since the Jin incident, we can kind of take what he says of a grain of salt for the rest of his Yu-Gi-Oh career because we know his stance on the game, we know that he is the kind of player who will take advantage of other players with the intention of winning and yet he will still consider that an honourable win because he will happily cheat people out of a win trying to deceive them so that he can get an advantage and so now we know what kind of player he is we can take what he says with a grain of salt and we can now just discredit everything he says from now on which is probably the best thing to do because not we should not be giving one player in this game so much power to dictate how the game plays out and it's not my fault but it's not your fault but it's a collective issue where everyone plays a part in giving Hoban um, so much credit for stuff that realistically he's just cheating other players out of wins and so on like that. So, but in this article, in one of the recent ones, he's been talking about if the game is skillful. Um, he actually says in it, him and other players from the ARG circuit, like Ben Leverett, which is one of his be uh, his favourite players that he likes to practice with. Um, there's Fraser Smith, there's uh, Joe Bogley, I think his name is. There's a few other ones, you know. There's a lot of people that contribute to the ARG articles. Hoban does a few of those, you know, now and again he comes out with something, everyone loves to read them. And he says in his article that him and Ben, um, Ben recently won the last ARG circuit, so Hoban was pretty happy about it because him and Ben dedicate 30 to 40 hours a week practicing Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Playing, like if they're playing Negros, they're both playing the Negros Mirror because it's the decks that they expect to play the most, you're expecting to play the Mirror, and so you are going to play the, the best deck you can possibly play and then you play it so that you can beat the mirror and therefore you have to spend 30 to 40 hours a week trying to make sure that your deck can triumph over its mirror match. If you're playing against other decks in the game then of course if you play if you just buy the best deck then you will probably beat other people. So we know that Hope is a very successful player and he said he's admitted to dedicating 30 to 40 hours a week to practice. Now we know from that, the implication of that is that Hoban doesn't work. He actually has a he has like some kind of majoring in political science or some bullshit like that. So we know that Hoban is a student, but he also has the time to spend 30 to 40 hours a week. So if he's studying and he's doing work, then he's also trying to find 40 hours a week, not work, not studying, but playing Yu-Gi-Oh. So whenever he's not studying or when he's not doing something work related he's doing Yu-Gi-Oh so he never has a moment's rest and he puts himself in that situation so that he can optimize his success at large tournaments now this is where it I want to fork it off into two different roads here now I want to go into money and time okay so with money um, it can buy you some success but only when you're not playing the mirror match because where the mirror, where the the money comes in and it gives you success, you start to level off when you start to realize that if you're playing the mirror match, you know it's the game of skill at that point, and you have to make sure that your mirror your mirror match game is much better than theirs. And so, if you're playing something like Cleefort, where the game the deck realistically takes zero skill, it takes some skill. There is some skill involved, but ultimately, it's skill drain floodgates and vanity's emptiness floodgate, and so on, so on. So. If you both have a money fight in this regard, then you need to think who has, um, who gets luckier, right? And lucky doesn't win tournaments. So money does come into it because you need the money to acquire the best decks, but only to a certain point. And then you start to taper off and you need to kind of think, oh, my work is now more important than Yu-Gi-Oh, so I'm only going to be only so good. But generally money is a good enough indicator of whether or not you'll win a regional, whether or not you'll do well at nationals, or whether you'll be able to go to Euros and actually do well, because you can afford to go to Euros because of travel being quite expensive. You can go to Euros because you work, so over the weekends and stuff like that, you can do that. As we said, money only buys you some level of success, so the other portion is time. And so if we know that Hoban spends 40 hours a week playing, there is some accumulation of time and money that you need to spend into the game to be successful, to be the best player. And so, 
what I've come to the conclusion is, is that Konami will cater the way they release cards, the way they release their product, they will cater it so that the age of the successful age on average is between the ages of 18 and 22 when you have time you've got parents with money and you can they can give you money that way roughly between 18 and 22 when you've got time money and energy to be able to travel which is expensive to go to high high end events like a YCS or an ARG event or a nationals or an euros or the equivalent in America and they take up whole weekends so you have the time to blow on a whole weekend of Yu-Gi-Oh right so that's a good you know 24 hours to the multiply by two or three depending on how long you want to spend there it's it takes up lots of time away from you so you need to have the money to get there the time to spend in it and then you need to have the energy itself while the energy is not really that important because you can you can everyone has the energy to do anything really you just have to get up out of get out of bed to do it what i've come to the conclusion is is that konami wants both your money and your time so that they can funnel the successful player base down to a certain number of people so that they they get a good quality of people coming in they have a lot of people you know people with money will go to YCS's uh, but the larger events like Euros and Worlds you only get the people that have both and so therefore realistically the game comes down to the game is a full-time job where you need money you need uh, the time to play the game and then for if you can do that and you've got the skill then you can be the best player in the game and so it's not about inherent talent or it's not about whether or not you're just naturally good at this game it's actually about Konami being able to extract as much of your commitment to your life that you want to spend playing Yu-Gi-Oh as much as possible out of you so that you can be the best and that is exactly how it is and that's my opinion and so if you feel like it's not that case then definitely comment down below at the same time the best thing i want to take from this is that konami is trying to milk you for everything you're worth but not in the most not in a really disgusting way but in a way where once you start realizing that you're paying for necros and that you're trying to play necros at every event you go to and be the best at it then you are the exact player that konami wants you to be so remember that and remember that when Konami has you under their thumb and that you can't leave them and you can't quit because you have committed money and time and so on and so forth. So thanks for listening guys. Comment down below your opinions and I will see you guys in a few days. So until next time, the Tishji Lover is out.